بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیئر از اے شارٹ ویڈیو آن ڈفیکلٹ کوشچنز وچ ہیو بین ٹیکن فرام ڈفرینٹ پیپرز آف دی نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو سلیبس اینڈ آئی جسٹ وانٹ دیز ان پریپریشن فار یور ایگزام وچ از آن دا نائنتھ آف جون سو پلیز گو تھرو دیز ویڈیوز دس از دا فرسٹ ویڈیو اینڈ دیل بی اے کپل آف مور ویڈیوز آن دس ناؤ دس واز کلاسیفائڈ ایز اے ڈفیکلٹ کوشچن and uh, because i've gone through the exam reports and i've seen which were the difficult questions that i'm picking those questions up and discussing with you and i'll show which row shows the correct order of size of these cell structures cell structures width of a mitochondrion width of a ribosome width of a cell membrane width of a chloroplast now unless you're very clear on these you're going to get this wrong you see width of a cell membrane cell membrane means this is the cell so say this is the whole cell So this width of the cell membrane, now this is in nanometers. I said width of the cell membrane, not the cell wall. Cell membrane is present in animal and plant cells. So you've got to understand is that that has to be, that is about seven nanometers. So that is the smallest thing. Then first get the units right. One centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. One millimeter is equal to 1000 micrometer. And then one micrometer is is equal to 1000 nanometers so nanometer is the smallest unit and that is what you have to know you have to know the sizes of all these the video and have a look at all these you can see how they have been all labeled so we've got the uh, cell membrane here then we have the virus then we have a bacteria with a micrometer and then we have an organelle mitochondrion and then we have the cell which is a eukaryotic cell which is 100 micrometer so please just pause the video here and have a look at all this and then you can also get on to go on to the google search and find out more uh, diagrams like this why was the answer c because the chloroplast is the biggest one so this would be the chloroplast was the largest one and then we have the mitochondrion and then we have a ribosome and the cell membrane goes right at the end so it was the three would be the smallest the cell membrane was the smallest in width it says correct size of these cell structures so width of a cell membrane so this means width of a cell membrane means this so this was a challenging question i think now that you figured it out i'm sure if it comes in the exam you'll be able to do it the question is question number 2 the diagram shows a stage micrometer scale viewed through an eyepiece containing a graticule The small divisions of the stage micrometer scale are 0.1. Now, which we have to understand is that this is the stage micrometer. This is the stage micrometer. Now, if you get this wrong, well, then you've had a problem with it. Now, this division is equal to 0.1 millimeter, which means 50 to 90, which means what? 40 is equal to 0.1 millimeter. now everything becomes easy because then you know 40 is equal to how many micrometer so that is easy it is equal to 100 micrometer why 0.1 into 1000 so this is 100 micrometer right 0.1 into 1000 because 1 millimeter is equal to 1000 micrometer So now that you figured this out now what they ask you is the stage micrometer is replaced by a plant cell and then what is the actual length of the nucleus in a plant cell now you can see this is the nucleus here so the nucleus is this so the nucleus is equal to 10 units so 65 to 75 so now you can understand how much is 10 is equal to so you can do 1 is equal to what and then 10 is equal to 25 micrometer so that is why the answer is b i hope you've understood this please go over this one or two times that the stage micrometer is that one and what is it is equal to 50 to 90 40 so 40 is equal to 0.1 then you convert it to micrometers why did i convert it to micrometers because you look at all the answer this is micrometer this is micrometer this is micrometer this is in millimeter So the answer was either in millimeter or micrometer. And then you look at this cell because it says it's placed by a slide of a plant cell. 
and then you can see the nucleus in it. And sometimes they've also asked you the size of a chloroplast. So these are the chloroplasts in it. So then you figure that out. So I hope this is clear to you now. And you can go through it once again and see if you have not understood it, then just revise it and then see where you are not clear about it. Now coming to another question which was done wrong by a large number of students. You go question number six is the DNA of typical prokaryotes is naked and circular. Now what does naked mean? Naked means it does not have any histone proteins. If you didn't know that, well, you should be knowing that. Which statement describes how the DNA of eukaryotes differs from the DNA of typical prokaryotes? So, we have to understand is DNA of eukaryotes is only one thing missing. They've told you in the question it was naked, so it does not have any histone proteins to it. So that is why the answer is D, only DNA of eukaryotes has protein. You see, why is A wrong? We've got to understand. Only DNA of eukaryotes has a nuclear element around it and is a double helix. Well, even prokaryotes is a double helix. So that's why this is wrong. Only DNA of eukaryotes has a nuclear envelope around it and is circular. That's wrong because in a eukaryote, the DNA is circular in the mitochondria and chloroplast. Because remember, eukaryotes are animal and plant cells and fungal cells. So it is, it is circular in the mitochondria, but it is linear in the, in the nucleus. Then why is this wrong? Only DNA of eukaryotes is protein attached to it in the double helix. Please remember, even prokaryote is a double helix. So this is what you have to understand. This is, this is where these were the two choices between this and this. So this is, if the double helix is there, only DNA, so that means if we are saying only DNA of eukaryotes is double helix, that means you, uh, prokaryotes is not a double helix. So this was more of a, you know, checking how well your English is, not more mainly checking your biology content. So I hope this is clear to you now. And the answer to this is D. Now, another difficult question, which I agree is uh, rather difficult and difficult for you all to comprehend. Uh, the graph shows how the concentration of components of an enzyme catalyzed reaction changes with time. Which line represents enzyme with M empty active sites? Now, what you have got to understand in an enzyme controlled reaction, what is the first thing? Is there an enzyme? Then there is an active site. And on the active site fits a substrate. So we can think of what are the things. We think of a substrate, then there are enzymes, then we can think of enzyme substrate complexes being formed. So you have to say, it says the graph shows the concentration of components of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Changes with time. So naturally enzymes would remain the, probably the same, but they haven't asked you that. Substrate would decrease and products would increase. Yes, there would be products as well. So products would increase. Enzyme substrate complex would form and then would increase and then decrease because then, of course, if all the substrate is finished. So when you look at this question, this was a very, very challenging question. Which line represents enzymes with empty active sites? But why is the answer B? This is the question you've got to first give me. It's not a question of B because I can give you the same graph and ask you something else. So it says, which line represents enzymes with empty active sites? Now, the reason why they are more active sites is because they will be empty active sites. What you've got to understand is that as the exam report says, that the concentration of empty active sites would be high at the start and at the end. At the start and at the end of the reaction. Now, I want you to look at another graph. This would be a very interesting graph to see. Now look what you're seeing. What do they say here? You have the concentration on this side. You have time on this side. Now you see how S is for the substrate. So the substrate is decreasing because the enzyme reaction that taking place with substrate is decreasing. Then what do we have here? P is for products. Now as you know, products will increase. Then enzyme substrate complexes. This is ES, enzyme substrate complex. Enzyme substrate complexes be formed. They will increase and then decrease. So you see how they are increasing and then they are decreasing. And the enzyme, this is the one, the enzyme, the empty active site, this is the enzyme. So you can see how the enzyme is 
Active sites are decreasing. First, there is the decreasing the empty active sites, and then they are increasing. So first of all, the reaction will take place. They will be initially they will decrease the uh, empty active sites, and then the active sites, empty active sites will be all will be empty active sites because the substrate will have finished. So the product will have formed. So look at this reaction. Imagine an enzyme catalyzed reaction taking place, and imagine an enzyme. Imagine the substrate fitting into it, and imagine the substrate all the substrate finishing off. So substrate is finishing. Or say there are 1,000 substrate molecules. At the end, there'll be zero substrate molecules. So do this example with yourself, and then of course you'll be able to answer this question. Very challenging question, and you cut this graph, and you could be asked something else. Now oh, another difficult question: 17. Plant cells were put into one of three different concentrations of sugar solution: 10%, 5%, and 2.5%. The cells were left for 15 minutes and then observed using a light microscope. Now you see this is the most plasmolysis. So I wrote here 10%. This is how I was doing it. And then this has got to be 5% because it says they were put in three different: so 10, 5, and 2.5. Now this one is fully turgid. So 2.5 means that means water enters and the cell is fully uh, turgid. So water enters and then the cell wall and the cell membranes have been pushed to the tonoplast has been pushed to the periphery. This one, of course, has lost some water, so 5%. So then it says which statements are correct. Cell Y has a lower water potential. Cell Y has a lower water potential than the sugar solution it was put in. So that is why water has entered and it has become fully turgid. Cell Z, this is the most plasmalized, so it has to be in the highest concentration. It must be 10%. So cell Z was in a 10% sugar solution. Yes, that makes sense too. And cell Z has a less negative. Yes, you see, because you have to understand if this is minus 10, cell Z has a less negative potential than the sugar solution it was put into. So it has to be minus 20 outside. That is why water has moved from minus 10 to minus 20. Minus 10 means... There are 10 grams of solute in it. Minus 20 means 20 grams of solute in it. So minus 10 has a higher water potential. If you don't understand this, you can't. So minus 10 and minus 20, less negative and more negative. So cell Z has a less negative water potential than the sugar solution it was put into. So that is why the answer to this is A, that all three of these were correct. Then this question was wrong by many, many students. Some fungi cause wilting in crops plants by growing within the xylem vessel. So something growing inside the xylem vessel, right? Which process will be directly affected by these fungi? You see, the water molecules are attaching to each other by cohesion. And they're attaching to the sides of the vessels by adhesion. Now, when something is blocking it, what is going to be lost? What is going to be lost is the cohesion between the water molecules. So the water molecules now cannot cross it. And why would it, it says, which process will be directly affected by these functions? Because there's a blockage. So cohesion between water molecules now no longer possible and it cannot rise up the xylem vessel. Difficult question, the loading of sucrose into companion cell involves a number of process. Which process is active? Now I'll just revise this with you. This is the sieve plate. This is the sieve tubes, right? Please remember, I always use the same color when I'm explaining something to you. So these are the sieve tubes and these are the companion cells here. This is the companion cell here. Now, you know, hydrogen ions are pumped out of the companion cell. Now, when hydrogen ions are pumped out of the companion cell, that is active transport. But when they start to diffuse back in, that is a passive process. They bring along with them sucrose. So the hydrogen ions, when they diffuse back in, this is facilitated diffusion. When the hydrogen ions diffuse back in, they also bring sucrose with them, and that is called co-transport. So the sucrose enters, and then, of course, we have the plasmodesmata. So the sucrose is going to enter through the plasmodesmata, will enter the sieve tube. So that is why the answer to question 26 was B. What is the active thing? The moment of hydrogen ions out of the cytoplasm of the companion cell. So this is the companion cell. This is the active process. The rest of all are passive. The diffusion uh, of hydrogen into and of course the sucrose along with it, co transport is a passive process. So this is a quick revision of this. So please do understand this. The difficult question was 33. Which statements about all bronchioles are correct? Which statement about all bronchioles are correct? The answer is D. Why is the answer D? Because there are no goblet cells. They both have ciliated cells and they have muscle tissue. Now I'm just going to show you a table which you all must learn and remember because there's very much in the syllabus, in the present syllabus today as well. 
the cell. Now we have said all bronchioles. Now when you look at all bronchioles, they have to understand is terminal and respiratory bronchiole. Now they do not have any cartilage. They do not have any goblet cells, but they do have smooth muscle and they do have cilia. And there's also a few. So all bronchioles, you have to understand is the question was all bronchioles. So all bronchioles are terminal and respiratory bronchiole. So this is why you have to remember this table very well to be answered, to be able to answer that question. You need to really remember this. This is from your book. I haven't got it from anywhere else. It's from the Cambridge International AS and A-level biology course book. So this is what I want you to revise and then be very careful to remember this in the exam. Very much like this diagram because it helps you to visualize the cell. And it helps you to understand that the nucleus, nucleolus, and how nucleic acids. Now, sometimes you ask your question, nucleic acids present. Now, you've got to remember nucleic acids are present where? There is ribosomes have a nucleic acid in them. And what you have got to understand is that the ER, why would the ER have uh, nucleic acid? Because they have the ribosomes on it. So the ribosomes also have ribosomal RNA. And then, of course, you want to understand is that inside the mitochondria, there is a circular DNA. So there is nucleic acid in that as well. Then there is nucleic acid in the cytoplasm. Why? Because you've got these free ribosomes. And these free ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA. And of course, then you would have tRNAs as well. And the mRNA, which would leave the nucleus, would go and travel onto the ribosome. So the mRNA, which was formed inside the nucleus, will travel to the uh, free ribosomes. So this is just a quick revision of you to remember that nucleic acids. By nucleic acids, I mean DNA and RNA. And then RNA is of three types, mRNA, tRNA, and ribosomal RNA. So you are all, most of you on WhatsApp are asking me questions which are very relevant to this. So these are the things that you need to memorize and visualize. Microvilli. Microvilli, I've got to understand, flagellum, cilium is something else. Microvilli are just foldings. Microvilli are just foldings of the cell membrane. So they increase the surface area of that cell. While flagellum is something else and cilium is something else. So they're made up of different structures. I end this video here and another two videos will follow on this very soon inshallah and so all the very best.